Hey everyone, it's Helen Castillo here with moodfabrics.com and today we're gonna to be working on the primrose pant. We'll be adding a faux fly, elastic in the waistband, and pockets to the side seam. Here I have my materials for the primrose pant and I'll be using a pocket from the Tamarind dress. This is a pocket that goes into the side seam and it can be added to any existing garment. Our supplies for today is going to be thread and a bobbin to match, some straight pins, We'll also be using three quarter inch elastic. I have a yard here for the waistband. We'll be doing a fold over waistband and inserting that later. You can use either a safety pin or a loop turner to guide that through. A link to all of these items will be linked in the description. And let's get started. I'm gonna start with my two front pieces pinned right sides together to sew my faux fly. I'll be using half inch seam allowance to sew along center front. I also have a notch here for when I fold over the waistband. When I get to the front crotch seam here, I'll just pivot and continue to my inseam. I like to reinforce in all my corners just because they're high tension areas. So now that we've sewn our center front with half inch seam allowance, I have reinforced in my corners here just because they're high stress points of the garment. What we're gonna do is clip towards this area. Typically when you have corners that you're flipping to the right side, you would clip to about a 16th of an inch. I could probably clip a bit closer, but just be very careful not to clip into the right side of the garment or the area of the garment that's going to show. Then we'll clip away at the seam allowance. In any curved seam allowance areas, you'll want to clip to release that fabric so when you turn it to the right side, you have less bulk and less tension. Another option would be to trim down your seam allowance of this area of the seam. The next step is to use a point turner to flip our faux fly right sides out. We want to use the point turner for this corner so we can have a nice clean edge from the right side. So now that we have our faux fly to the right side, I'm going to press open my center front seam allowance and give myself a nice clean press along the fly edge. So we've pressed our faux fly towards the wearer's right side. Due to the aesthetic choice of making these primrose pants two-toned, I decided to keep the pink being exposed. Typically with a fly, you would sew top stitching along about an eighth of an inch from where you can see the crease here. In this case, because it's more decorative, I'm gonna sew just right over top. If you're more comfortable pinning through, that's totally fine. In my case, I don't love pinning through the right side of the garment because I don't want it to leave holes or indentations on my fabric. And there you have your faux fly on the primrose pant. Well, this is the back of the pant, so now we're going to pin the back rise right sides together, and then we'll sew that up half an inch. There's also a notch here that indicates the fold for the waistband, where we'll place our elastic later in this tutorial. Now that we've sewn the back of our primrose pant, I'm going to trim down my seam allowance here to about a quarter inch. Other options would be to clip into your seam allowance like we did on that corner seam earlier. I always prefer to use a serger or trim down because it reduces the amount of bulk. So taking the back of our primrose pant, we're gonna flip that right sides open. You can run to the iron and press your seam allowance towards one side of the garment. We're gonna grab the front side of the pant and we're gonna close up those side seams. So with both pant legs, right sides facing, we're gonna pin along the out seam, also known as the side seam, on either side. Personally, I prefer to pin the top edges and bottom edges together first and line up the full length of the pant in between. You can see that I've started pinning from the bottom and the top edge of my pant here, and it just helps to keep all of your ease if there is any between both sides. We've pinned 
The full out seam of one side, we'll repeat that for the opposite pant leg. And you can consider pinning your inseam now or later, it's entirely up to you. But when pinning the inseam, make sure that your seam allowance is pointing toward the same direction on your front pant leg and your back pant leg. Bring those two together, pin, pin your hem edges as well, and then pin everything in between. The fun part about sewing the inseam is that you can sew it as one continuous stitch as long as you have enough pins and patience. For a quick and easy hem, you can do a single fold or a double fold. Depends on what type of finish you would like to have on your pants. For a single fold, you can press up at the seam allowance half of an inch or whatever your desired hem height is. You can also consider doing a zigzag stitch to clean finish the raw edge of the hem. Then to finish your hem, you can either press it in place before you start sewing or you can pin it. In this case, I'll be doing a half inch hem allowance. We'll be stitching 3 eighths of an inch from the bottom edge. We'll then use the zigzag stitch to clean finish the raw edge before we fold up the hem. And we did 3 eighths of an inch top stitch in thread to match. Repeat that for the opposite hem and you can consider using the same color thread. Or in this case, contrasting thread and go nuts. Go nuts! Go crazy! Now we are going to get started on creating the elastic waistband. To start, this is going to be the exact same process as we just did hemming the pant legs. We're using the zigzag stitch all the way around to clean finish the edges. First, we're going to fold over the top edge of our waistband. There is a notch that indicates how far you will be folding over. Here is a pro tip for when you are doing any type of fold over. We have our notch indicated here, but you want to be sure that your seam allowances stay aligned as well. We can use some pins to secure the fold at the seam allowances and continue pinning around the full circumference of the waistband. Next, we're going to do a top stitch. I like to use a stitch that's going to camouflage into my zigzag stitch. And we also need to leave an opening so we can later funnel through the elastic. So I'll leave the opening here at the side seam and I'll use two pins to indicate where I'll stop and start my sewing. And then we'll jump back on the machine. A fun hack for inserting elastic into a waistband is taking a large safety pin and attaching it to one edge of your elastic. This tip also works for repairing a lost drawstring on the waist of your favorite pair of sweatpants or drawstring on a hoodie. Once the safety pin is attached to the elastic, you can then insert the safety pin into the opening of your waistband casing. Once you've finished funneling your elastic through the entire length of your casing, you can bring both sides of your elastic together and pin them using the safety pin. Now is a great time to try on your primrose pants. Make sure they fit well and make any adjustments needed to the tension of the elastic while the waistband casing is still open. Now that your pants have the perfect fit, you can then use a zigzag stitch to secure your elastic in place. Finally, our last step is to close the remainder of the waistband opening. Use a back stitch to secure your thread, making sure not to catch your elastic. Continue sewing until the waistband opening is closed. Next, we are going to add a pocket into the side seam of the primrose pants. This hack can be used to add extra functionality of a pocket into any garment with a side seam. So here I have my primrose pant. What we're gonna do is open up the side seam and we're gonna join this to the side seam allowance of the existing pant. What we have to do first is indicate how tall of an opening we need to open, where we want it to be. I would highly recommend trying the pant on and marking with a pin where you'll have either opening of your pocket. Once you've indicated where you want your pocket opening to be, we're gonna take a seam ripper and open up that seam. We need one set of our pocket bag for either side of our pants. All right, I'm gonna flip my pant inside out so that I can attach my pocket bag as a continuation of my existing side seam allowance. So taking my pattern, I'm gonna place that along the opening of my side seams and I'm gonna clip a notch at the bottom and the top opening. After we place our pattern and clip notches for where either end of the pattern is, we're gonna reinforce that opening at the top and the bottom of our new pocket opening. And I'm just stitching on top of my existing side seam. So you can use your old stitching line 
as a sewing guide. So a really fun detail to consider when adding pockets to an existing garment is playing with patterns. What you're going to do is you're gonna take the right side of your pocket bag and you're gonna place it to the right side of your pants. And what we're going to do is we're gonna align the seam allowance of our pocket bag with the existing seam allowance of the pant and pin along that edge. So now that we've pinned our pocket bag right side facing to right side facing of our pant, we're gonna continue by stitching right on top of that old side seam allowance stitch line and we'll repeat for the opposite side of the pant. Well, I'm gonna be real with you, I'm, I'm this is not perfect. This is like, if I were grading it, I'd give it like a 92. It's funny because I tell my students never pin unless your garment's flat. And I'm here like pinning in the air for this video. <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm gonna be like, no, don't watch this video. It's cheating. Now that we have both of our pocket bags attached to our seam allowance, you can see that there's a nice clean distinction between both. If you'd like to at this point, which is a bit of an advanced step, you can do what's called an understitch, where you take both of your seam allowances and your lining fabric, and you bring them toward the inside of the garment and do a stitch about a 16th of an inch away from that edge. And that's gonna keep the lining sticking into your garment anytime you're wearing it. So an understitch can be used practically on any finishing area of a garment where you have a lining and a self fabric. You take both of your seam allowances towards the lining edge. And what we're going to do is a 16th of an inch top stitching so that we force all of it to stay toward the inside of the garment. You can do an eighth of an inch if that's easier for you. Just be sure that you're holding your fabrics a bit taut. It's a nice finishing option to consider on waistbands as well. And there you have it, understitch. So after that incredible pro tip of understitching your garments, pockets, and our last step is to close our pocket bag. So here you have a few options. If you want a clean finish, you can use the serger, you can use the marrow, or you can just top stitch. Another fun idea is adding bias tape to enclose that edge of your pocket bag. Just get a little decorative with it. That's it, last step, we'll just do, I'll do like a zigzag just cause it looks nicer and then we're finished. So now that we've clean finished our pocket bag, we can flip this to the right side. That understitch is gonna come in handy from the wearer side because it's gonna look really, really clean. So let's turn this right side out. Wow, that's pretty damn decent, right? With an added side seam pocket, including understitch, and the beauty of having an inseam pocket is that you can use a fun pop of color. Pull all your goodies. Put all the stuff you wanna put in it. Put that in it. Put this in it. Put this in it. You never know when you're gonna need it. Thank you for joining us today for the Primrose Pant Sewing Tutorial. Be sure to download your free sewing pattern from the Mood Society blog and get started today. If there are any techniques you'd like to see in the future, be sure to let us know in the comment section below. Like and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest sewing tutorials from moodfabrics.com.